Right now, the time in ten seconds. Seven o'clock. Santana's First Nighter Program. From the Little Theater of Times Square. Starring Barbara Luddy and Owen Soule with an all-star cast sent to you by Campana, the quality name in cosmetics. Theater time on the Great White Way. And an opening night performance is scheduled for your entertainment at the Little Theater of Times Square. And what a celebrated audience of first nighters we're sure to see. Now, here's our genial first nighter, our host for the evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This promises to be an exciting night. My cab is waiting. Won't you step in? All right, driver, to the little theater. Up Broadway, the brightest nightlife street in the world, and across 42nd Street. And there, just ahead, is the little theater off Times Square. Well, here we are. Yes. Hey, look like the warmer girls around that tent. He must be Van Johnson. I think I see how it's used. See, that must be Hedda Hopper under that hat. Ticket ready, please. Have your ticket ready, please. Good evening, Mr. First Nighter. The usher will show you your seat. Thank you. We'll go right in. Here we are in down front seats, ladies and gentlemen, with just time to look at our program. Tonight's play is a comedy entitled Wolf with Sheepskin, written by Jack Kelsey. And it looks like a superb cast for comedy. Barbara Luddy and Olin Soleil do the honors in the lead roles. Miss Luddy playing the part of Betty Herbert, and Mr. Soleil in the role of Professor Algernon Riggs. In the all-star supporting cast are Jerry Hausner as the Duke of Brooklyn, Ken Christie as the Earl of Chicago, Ed McDonald as the Killer, and other famous names. And now, before first curtain, let's listen to Frank Worth and the famous First Nighter Orchestra. For first curtain, the house lights are out, and here's the play. Uh, is uh, is this Mrs. Hybert's room in the house? Yes, it is, but I'm afraid... Hey, I heard it was an old dame ran the joint. Mrs. Hybert. Mrs. Herbert is my aunt. She's on vacation. I'm in charge. Ah, I'm going to like this job. You got a room? I'm sorry, no, and I don't think you'd be happy here anyway. Oh, why not? Well, our clientele is very quiet and refined. They all work during the day. Well, that's why my boss picked this place. Why don't you figure on refined? I uh, couldn't help noticing the racing form sticking out of your pocket, and that's it. Bulge under your arm. Uh, did you ever carry a rod in your hip pocket, sister? Well, it is very uncomfortable. Uh, Miss, uh, uh, what's your name? Betty. Uh, now, 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 look, I- I'm rather busy just now. Well, leave us be refined, Betty, huh? I am called Duke. And here comes my pal, the oil. Hey, look, Duke. Huh? There was Dick. Dick's hanging around the killer's train come in. Huh? So I slipped him a piece of paper with his address on him. Okay. Yeah, just so long as he gets your martini, he's going to be happy. <gasps> Dry martini? The gangster? Yeah. Um, uh, oil? Uh, was the killer disguised like the boss said? Yeah, yeah. Wearing big horn rimmed specs. Carrying a briefcase. I chased him right off. Uh-huh. Big guy. Good looking. Uh-huh. I'll have to ask you, the gentleman, to leave now. Duke, what's this to me to bother you? Please do not pull a rod on a cute cookie like Betty unless you take your hat off, Oil. Well, okay. He's going to give us a room for this out-of-town box man, won't you, Betty? What's a box man? Well, you know, he opens safes when the owners ain't around. <laughs> now, this character's got 20 grand, see? Half of which dough belongs to my boss. And he's coming here to make the split. Well, that's very honest of him, I'm sure. Yeah, the killer is being looked for by certain parties, see? So Martini picked your joint as a hideout until the dough is divvy. You get it? Mm, I'm afraid I do. Would that be him? Or he? The, the killer? Huh? Glasses and a briefcase. Yeah, that is him. Uh, he. I, uh, I beg your pardon. I believe you have a room available. Well, I... You I... heard what that guy said, sister. Why, how nice. The very man who directed me at the railroad station. Oh, you said the young lady's heart of you. Not at all. Your friends have arranged everything. Will you sign the book? Well, I hardly anticipated the ease with which my simple needs would be met. 
Gee, would you get a load of that talk? How do you like that? Yeah. When we're forced to, we can sometimes find room, Mr. Re- oh, I beg your pardon, Professor Riggs. Is that what he wrote in the book? Yes, Professor Algernon Riggs. It amuses you? <laughs> I'll say. Did you think it up yourself? No. No, I understand that my mother, under the deplorable spell of the romantic fiction oh, of her day... Oh, brother, you're okay. This get-up would fool the smartest cop in town. Well, allow me to rise to the occasion, Professor. I am the Duke of Brooklyn. This is the oil of Chicago. Aye. And this dame here is Miss Betty Hoybert. Now... Leave us lay off the jokes, Duke, and make sure the uh, professor is willing to uh, split the cabbage. Oh, delighted, gentlemen. Merely name the time and place. Ah, you see? He's okay, Earl. You gonna put the briefcase in that safe behind the desk? Oh, no, the contents are too valuable to let out of my hands for a moment, Duke. Ah, maybe you're right. Uh, show him to his room, Betty. We'll stick around. Well, just let me get the key. I think I shall enjoy my stay in your colorful establishment, Miss Hoybert. Oh, yes, we have such fun. Just before you came in, I thought I was going to die laughing. This is your room, Professor. Please step in. After you, Miss Hoybert. You don't take any chances, do you? Uh, do you think you should pause the door? We're completely unchaperoned. Well, I'm well protected now, thank you. And if you move, I'll shoot. Good heavens. You've got a revolver. Yeah, we keep it behind the desk for emergencies like this. You can drop the act now, Killer. I know all about you, and I'm going to relieve you of your rod, as your friends downstairs would say. But I haven't got it. Uh, Miss Herbert, <laughs> please, you're tickling me. <laughs> but you haven't got a gun. No. Are you what they call a gun doll, Miss Herbert? The word is gun mall, and certainly not. Well, then why did your confederate direct me here from the railroad station? So you could lure me to this room and hold me up? You th- mm, Don't you move a step. You have very large, kindly eyes, Miss Hoybert. I don't think you'd shoot me. I'm going to raise that window and shout for a policeman. You'd go... Well, then you aren't really the killer? Most certainly not. I am Professor Algernon Riggs of the State University. How can you believe otherwise? Well, your disguise did seem awfully cute. But when you called me Miss Hoybert, I thought you'd slipped up. Well, isn't that your name? Oil introduced you as... Earl introduced me as Miss Herbert. Oh, oh, good heavens. Of course, the local dialect. I I hope it's not habit for me. What about the $20,000 you promised to divide? I? I said that? You distinctly said, name the time and place. For dinner, my dear girl. They invited me to divide a, a cabbage with them. <laughs> and I'm distinctly fond of corned beef and a green, a leafy, a vegetables. Hand me your briefcase. If you're a professor, there won't be any $20,000 in it. Oh, this is ridiculous to say nothing's embarrassing. Let's see. Two shirts, three pair of socks, short with red stripes. Well... For a professor. Uh, Miss Herbert. Uh, Herbert. If you hey, damage... you be quiet. What have you got wrapped in this paper? If you damage that in any way, I shall never forgive you. Oh, he, you are the killer. Stand back. Don't move. You, you fiend. Well, how, how does an old bone wrapped in paper make me a killer? Who else would carry a bone around in a briefcase? <clears throat> that happens to be Dr. Small's tibia. <laughs> you're... You're a victim? Uh, no. No, it isn't exactly his tibia. It belongs to his museum. He loaned it to me for a thesis I'm writing on the dinosaur. The what? A large lizard that died thousands of years ago. Preposterous to accuse me of having had anything to do with his death. Oh. Young woman, Betty, what are you doing? And I thought you were a gangster. No, 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 no. Calm down, Betty. There, now. Oh, your hair is lovely. Soft as my fighter's fur. I'm all right now. Thanks for the use of your shoulder. Oh, uh-huh. pleasure, I'm sure. <laughs> but I do feel like telling those men downstairs a thing or two. Oh, now, please try to understand, Professor Riggs. They're gangsters. They're not going to like us when they find out you're not the killer. They might even shoot us. Oh? Well, I, uh, I shouldn't like to die now. Uh, that is, now that we've met. You're, uh... <clears throat> well, I mean to say... Uh... Mm-hmm. I think you're cute, too. <laughs> What was 
that you said about my hair? Soft. Soft as mephitis fur. Mephitis? Mm. Latin zoological name for the skunk. <laughs> Be careful. Give me that gun. And the curtain comes down on the first act of the right play in the little theater on Times Square. Here's the end of Act One, ladies and gentlemen. And here comes a message you'll want to hear from Larry Keating. Yes, ladies, here is news you'll love to hear. So listen carefully. Your favorite pre-war hand lotion, good, dependable, quick-acting Italian balm is back again. Yes, Italian balm, that's exactly what I said. You can believe your ears. I said Italian balm is back again. There it is, at your favorite store today, just like it used to be. As you know, Italian bomb could not be made except for just a minute quantity during the war years. Its fine, precious ingredients weren't to be had. But now, just step into your nearest store and say, please give me a bottle of Italian bomb and you'll get it. It's the same famous lotion that you loved so well, made exactly as it used to be made with every one of its original ingredients. You'll recognize it in a minute by its famous green and white cotton. You'll try it on your hands and arms and elbows, to make sure that it's just as good as you remember it. And sure enough, it is. So soothing and quick softening to dry skin. So different. So dependable for helping your skin to stay softer, smoother, prettier. No matter how much work your hands may do, nor how hard the water is. Yes, it's the same lotion about which you've said so often, it just has no equal. And mark this fact, too. The price is the same pre-war price. Same quality, same quantity, same price. So do this, won't you? Get your bottle of good, rich, concentrated Italian bomb tonight. It's back again. the aisles to their seats. The lights are dim, and here's the second act of Wolf with Sheepskin. I'm getting tired getting to this lobby, Duke. When's to kill him and that thing coming back ah, down? relax, relax, sir. Well, Martini don't want us in no trouble. That kill would plug you for a nickel. But we gotta phone the boss and tell him that 20 grand is here waiting to be cut. All right, leave us change the subject, pal. Here they come. Well, gentlemen... I've had a little talk with Miss Herbert, and I find there's been a lamentable error on your part. Huh? Hey, you'd better not have anything to do with that briefcase you'll carry on, bud. Oh? Thank you for reminding me, Earl. Will you put it in the safe, Betty? Well, if, if you think that's why... That's okay, Betty. It'll keep that till Martini is ready. Uh, you, uh, Duke. I took a liking to you at first glance, but I'm afraid I misjudged the situation. Speak English, bud. You planning to double-cross your boss? <clears throat> you don't seem to believe that I am actually named Algernon Riggs. Ah, uh, don't mind, oil killer. I think it's a very pretty name. Well, let me put it simply. A, you are gangsters. B, you've mistaken me for someone called the killer whom you've never seen. C, you think I have some cabbage. Yes. That is, ill-gotten gains in my briefcase. When actually, it's a rare bone. <sighs> Go on, killer. I could listen to you talk forever. Oh, dear, the Duke simply doesn't believe you, Professor. Well, we must say that I think it's the best act I ever heard. It's really an education, you know, that meeting up with you, killer. Did you pick all this up in a pen? Oh, I give up. Communication between us is impossible, Betty. Don't you ever go to the movies, Professor? Oh, by Joe, cinema gang pictures, you mean? Mm -hmm. Well, I could, uh, I could try it. Uh, <clears throat> listen, use, use mugs? Huh? Yeah. What would a, a joint like me be doing with 20, uh, 20, uh... 20 G's. Uh, thank you, Betty. With 20 G's. Uh, my racket is zoology. I'm lugging a, uh... <clears throat> how would you translate tibia, Betty? You've got me. Uh, uh, stack of lettuce? Cabbage? Dough? 
sister's giving me a headache, Duke. The boss is waiting. Ah, uh, you know, Oil, I ain't had such an interesting conversation since we took Benny the bookworm for a ride. Fun, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, killer, don't think this ain't been fun, but we got a slam. Do you plan to return? Ah, uh, stay hold up till we slip you to word, pal. And killer, thanks for cooperating. But good heavens, man, how have I cooperated? That rod in your pocket, pal. If you was going to make trouble, you'd have pulled it. Well, be seeing you. So on. Good heavens, buddy. I still have your revolver in my pocket. I don't think you realize what a narrow escape we've just had, Professor. Well, uh, perhaps we should call the police, Betty. Well, we don't need to now. But, Tim, we found his tibia, you know. And I refuse to leave you in danger. Oh, that sweet of you, Algy. Now, we'll never see those two again. Well, would you like something to eat? Oh, first I must call Dr. Small and tell him where I am. And then, Betty, you know what might be invigorating? A good dip cup of tea. <laughs> Your little cakes are delicious, Betty. Sorry, I can't give you the Latin name or the chemical formula. Uh, the longer I know you, the more amazed I am. Beauty, domesticity, perspicacity. Mm, I bet you say that to all the girls. You know, Betty, my life at the university is rather lonely. And even you have been... Well, that is... <clears throat> I mean to say... Professor, not at a loss for words, not you. Oh, no, indeed. It's merely that you do something to my bloodstream. Probably increase the adrenaline content. You are so romantic. Funny, though. I like you in spite of yourself. Oh, the bell on the desk. Somebody came into lobby. Oh, shall I uh, come along? Thank you, no. I'll be right back. Oh, dear. What's the matter, lady? Seen a ghost? <laughs> Those glasses, that briefcase, I thought for a minute I was seeing double. Yeah, what's wrong with them? You, you must be the killer. How do you know that, lady? Well, you were expected earlier. Two of the boys arranged for your hideout. Yeah, that's what Martini said a minute ago on the phone, see? His gorillas are supposed to meet my train. You one of his mob? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, from a way back. The boss wants I should put that 20 grand you got in the safe here. Ah, ain't much you don't know, huh? Me and the big shot were like that. Give me your briefcase. Well, I don't know. Here, what's that? Oh, one of the mugs put boards here. Give me, give me your case. I'll put it in the safe while you get behind the gates at the window. We don't want him to see you. No, that's right. Well, they don't give me no double cross. Ain't that? Well, what <laughs> Just a second, Professor. I mean... Yeah, come on in. It's time for me to leave now for the museum, Betty. Or weren't you talking to someone? I was talking. I was jabbing with a mug, but he landed. I beg your pardon. Algernon, please take your tibia and scram. Scram? Betty, perhaps I should warn you that your companions play an important part in forming a vocabulary. Perhaps. Oh, oh, my dear girl, you don't need to throw my briefcase at me. Will you take it and get out? Yes, but I'll be back as soon as I can. Oh, I wonder if I can ever understand women. You can come out now, killer. Uh, I couldn't make out what you said from back there. What was that about a briefcase? I had to put it away in the safe while I was talking with that guy. Here, let me show you. See? Your briefcase. Okay. Now I'll lock it up. Oh, God. I right, figured I'd get me a bite to eat before that. Uh, hello? Oh, Dr. Small. Yes, Professor Riggs, just a minute left to meet you. Oh, hold, hold the line a minute, please. I have to be polite to these mugs. You can get a good cup of java right across the street, sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'll grab one of them come back. If Martini's gorilla show up, you tell him where you can find me. Ah, uh, here you are. Oh, the, the, the doctor's small. Now, please listen carefully. It's a matter of life and death. When Professor Riggs arrives, you're going to find money in that briefcase instead of that hard old bone. Well, I know you don't understand, but I just switched these cases with a gangster. Algernon has the gangsters, and I have your tired old tibia here in my face. Tell him to get the police. I, I, I can't talk anymore. Hey, we've just seen a very funny thing, Betty. Yes, how is it? Isn't this Duke of Brooklyn and Neil of Chicago? Yeah, and like Duke says, we would have wood, with you? Yeah. You see, we are walking down the street, when all of a sudden we see two killers. Two. 
Yeah. One of them gets in a taxi. The other one goes in a restaurant. You're that silly. You must be seeing double. Well, this is very possible. We are very nervous. So we call Martini on the phone, and he sounds a nerd at us. He says to get back here and collect his dough, and no mistake. Or he personally will kick our teeth down our throat. So you better get it up, Cookie. You mean you want the briefcase and the money right now? Yeah, before we begin to see three killers instead of two. I'll get the dough out of the safe and we'll split it. Right this very minute? Why not? This is the payoff, Betty. We got to get half that cabbage and no bones about it. All right, now, ladies. Here at the end of Act Two is Larry Keating to remind you. Remind you that your old favorite hand motion, Italian bomb, is back again. And over this first night of program, here in the little theater off Times Square, we're trying to spread the word far and wide, the Italian bomb is back. Thousands of women, unable to get Italian bomb during the war, will welcome this news with open arms. Or I should say, open hands. Because they missed Italian bomb. So many wrote and said, it never had an equal. I miss it more than I can say. I've tried to find a lotion that would do as much for my hands, but I can't. Yes? The Italian bomb, made exactly as it was made before the war, including all of its original ingredients, is back in the stores again, ready to greet its millions of old friends. There it is, in its same green and white carton, just as it used to be. And mind you, it's priced just as it used to be also. Same quality, same quantity, same pre-war price. Just 25 and 50 cents and a dollar a bottle. So, do this for us, will you please? Help us tell all of Italian bomb's old friends that their old favorite hand lotion is back again. They'll rejoice once more in the swift, sure way that Italian bomb helps protect skin against dryness and chaffing. They'll cheer to have again the lotion that's so rich, so good, so economical, that just one drop will serve both hands. open it up. Eh, uh, you wouldn't give us no double cross now, would you, Betty? Oh, of course not, you. But uh, half of that money in the briefcase belongs to the killer, and then... And... Oh, dear, here you go. That ain't him. This guy don't even look like the killer. Hi, if that's that. These martinis go there, Larry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are them. Boys, shake hands with the killer. Eh, uh, you sick, Betty. You don't even sound like you. Don't she talk like this all the time? Certainly not. She talks better than me, even. So, I've been double crossed. All right, get the hands off and take them off. Look out, he's got a gun. What'd you think he had in his pocket? Gumdrop? It's the killer, all right, Earl. Did you see that quick draw? Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. Please, young man, let's all keep our heads. I can swim. Five a second. That's Chris, your friend for me. You know, I am very disappointed in you, Betty. Who was the professor guy if he wasn't a killer? He tried to tell you, Duke, he's Professor Algernon Ritten. And he talks like that all the time? All the time and frequently. Okay, Sister. Now I'll put their rods in your face and get out my police case at the same time. Oh, I don't say there's much else I can do. No, not at this time. Martin, he ain't going to like this killer. He wants to slip. Nah, well, he's going to get it. I just ain't taking no chances, see? I Open her up. I don't see why you're in such a hurry to open it. W- wouldn't you all maybe like a cup of tea first? The cabbage first, if you don't mind, Betty. Yeah, yeah. You, you open it up, sister, and dump the dough out on the desk. There's been enough boners already. Boners? Oh, dear. Well, here goes. What, uh, what are you carrying a old soup boner around for? Maybe, uh... A little black market meat business on the side, eh, killer? Uh, uh, give me that tape. Uh, what is this? Socks and shirts and... Hey, look at them nice red striped shorts. Hey, very pretty. 
This ain't my case. Maybe there's been a real mistake. Maybe your case got switched with someone else. Oh, and I thought we were friends, Betty. Hey, I, what is a nice funeral wreath for, Doyle? You can't come in here, any of you, and I'll beat me. I know the professor has found that money in the case I gave him. We'll call the police, and they'll be here any minute. And, and... Oh, Betty. Uh, are you all right, Betty? Oh, yes, yes, I'm all right, Algernon, you know, but you came just in time. That man is the real killer. Ah, oh, indeed. You, sir, with the firearm. Now, never mind that, bud. Just hand over my briefcase. I shall do nothing of the kind, killer. Hey, Professor, this is no time for work. Do like the man says before the cops get here. Cops do? You you did call the police, didn't you, Algernon? Well, it did occur to me when I opened the briefcase in the cab and saw that money, but I was in such a hurry to get... You know what? It looks like you can put that rod away. The Professor's a good egg. I like him. Okay, okay, Pop. You fork over that 20 grand, see? And there'll be a couple of bucks in it for you, to take your mouth down. Now, there's no use trying to bribe me, killer. You've caused me quite enough embarrassment as it is. What if I had said to Dr. Small, thank you for the loan of your tibia, doctor. I am returning it to you in perfect shape. And then... Yeah, yeah, go on. Suppose, Duke, I had opened my briefcase and out tumbled this big stack of dirty money. Oh, say, that'd be... A... <laughs> what am I saying? Twenty grand wouldn't embarrass me, I mean. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, Joe. Except you still got it. I am referring to a moral principle, killer. This polluted pelt must be returned to its rightful owners. Mm, okay, Bob. You're asking for uh, it. Hold it, killer. Never mind the gap. We'll take it from him nice and gentle. Okay, Oil? It'll be a pleasure, Duke. Please, Algernon, give them the case before you get hurt. I'm warning you, gentlemen, I don't like violence. But if you provoke me, I'll not be responsible. We'll take that chance. You take it from the other side, Duke. Right. Come one step farther, either of you, and I'll split you like a couple of infinitives. <laughs> Now, now, Professor, this makes us more than it does you. Uh, grab him, Oil. I, 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 I warn you. You, you, you. And you, too, Oil. Do you about Oil? The way they crashed into the wall in the table. Yes, yes I, I used to teach jiu-jitsu during the war, but I prefer zoology infinitely. Algernon, the killer. Uh, don't worry, sister. I got no idea of time going with him. Uh, I'll just hang on to my girl now. I got it back. He picked up the case when you dropped it out, you know. You better return it, killer. I've known broken bones to result in jujitsu. Bone? Good heavens, Betty, my tibia. I forgot what's happened to it. It's on the desk in far less danger than we are. The killer has a gun, remember? Oh, that reminds me. So do I. Don't move, killer. Why, you Watch right. your language. There's a lady present. I take his weapon from his pocket like a good girl, Betty. Frisk is the word, Algernon, and I'm getting very good at it, I must say. Now, the money, please, killer. Okay, okay. Let's let the guy like you get a rod. I took it from Miss Herbert earlier in the day. She thought I was you at the time. Uh, by the way, Betty, when you held me up this morning, did you know this gun wasn't loaded? That gun ain't loaded? I know, I just... Betty, what are you doing? That was a very lovely vase, Betty. Why did you break it over his head? Oh, Algernon, you idiot. You told him the gun wasn't loaded. Oh, well, so I did. How he missed of me. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Betty? Dear, I've made up my mind. Yes? Yes. I do need someone to look after me. Are you looking for beauty, domesticity, or perspicacity? <clears throat> Please don't be polysyllabic at a time like this. Listen, Bush, you said you could catch that sort of thing from the people you associate with. And don't try to change the subject by ending your sentence with a preposition. What was the subject, Bush? So nuts. I'm trying to tell you I love you. That's the first sensible thing I ever heard you say. Will you marry me, Cookie? Maybe. Come here, Bush. Close it. Put your arms around me. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know what to do next? Mm. <laughs> you love me more than your horrid old tibia. Tibia? Mm. What's this tibia? Okay, Butch, I'll marry you. <laughs> Next week, we want to invite you to a real fleeting drama, a heart gripping romance entitled Nonani. So be sure to tune in first nighter at the same time next week. 
And now we move out of the theater and into the street. This is your cab, Mr. First Matter. Thank you. Good night. Santana's First Night of Program, starring Olin Soleil and Barbara Luddy, is a copyrighted radio feature. Tonight's play was pure fiction and did not refer to real people or actual events. Cleopatra was a wise, wise girl. She used 15 separate and distinct perfumes. So why not try something new yourself? For example, that enchanting, lingering cotton blossom clothes. It's exquisite. Cotton blossom by Old South is featured at Better Drug and Department Stores. The First Night of Program came to you over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. The WBVM Air Theater, Wrigley Building, Chicago.